Okay, so in this video clip, we're going to take a look at the convergence dynamics of Cox, Frost, Rubenstein, Gerard, Tian, and Leisenreimer. These are different, these are four separate uh, binomial models, and we can use to estimate the value of a call and put for American and European options. Um, okay, so what I've done here is I've taken um, some values from uh, Brody and the Temple, uh, 1996. And um, in table two of their paper, you can follow through to the link. Uh, if we have these parameter values, the stock price is 100, the exercise 100, um, the risk free rate 3%, the, the dividend 7, uh, the volatility 20%, then the value of the American option true for a 15,000 step uh, Cox Frost Rubenstein tree is 9.066. Okay, and I've basically taken code here from um, Detail uh, Verts uh, F options, which is, uh, and I think I've left the link here to the um, original uh, code here. So if you just click on this link, it'll bring you through to an explanation uh, of the source code. Uh, but the original uh, code that's provided here came from F options, and you can find the source code here. Uh, the three models that were pre presented there were for Cox Ross Rubenstein, for Tian, and for Jarrod. And then we subsequently made some small minor changes so that it would estimate also the license uh, rhymer binomial uh, option tree. Okay, so uh, first things first, uh, with the uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein model, you can estimate both the um, European value and American value. If we execute, now I've set this up uh, using this um, uh, hyperlink. So if I go to Colab uh, and to R, it'll just bring me into uh, an R notebook in Google Colab. So I don't need to put in a magic cell. And if we just check here, what you'll find in the notebook settings, we don't have Python. The runtime actually is defaulting to R. Okay. So that basically means we can run R code natively here in this Google Colab uh, notebook. Okay, so if I take, uh, if I run the first snippet of code, which is just basically a Cox Ross Rubenstein tree, and I set out the following parameters. So it's a call, uh, um, American call, CA denotes American call, uh, stock price 100, exercise 100, uh, three year maturity, 3% risk free rate, cost of carry negative four, so that means dividend is 7%. Volatility is 20, and we have 100 step three, so n equal to 100. If we execute that, we find that the value we get for the American call is 905178. And then if I put in CE, denoting a European call, then, and I take the same values, except I change uh, three to one year, risk rate 5%, dividend is zero. So cost of carry is 5% also, 20% volatility, also 100 steps. Uh, for the European option, we get 1043. And remember, Cox Ross Rubenstein is a discrete time model. Um, it's approximating black shows for the European specification. And when we set up Black Scholes, which I've done below here, and put in the same parameter inputs for the call option, I got a value of 1045. So typically what we would expect here, if I increase the number of steps here for the European option, let's say change that to 1000 and execute that code again, I should get closer to the true value of 1045 for the European option. And you can see I do. And if I can change that up to 5,000 steps and run 
uh, again, we should be getting closer to uh, 1045, the true value. Okay, now I'm gonna switch that back to 100. And notice also, it's not, it's quite fast. Okay, so our code is relatively close to C++ and in the collab here, it seems to execute reasonably fast. So it's not bad in terms of performance. Um, that's one of the pluses here of using R. It's a practical uh, code and it's a code that uh, is available from the links that I pointed out to here. So do follow the links. Okay, now the first thing is I'm gonna try and compare the performance of the Cox Ross Rubenstein relative to the Tian model where I've done basically the same. The only difference between the Tian model is the parameters. The way I estimate U and D and P is changed a little bit. And there's an uh, explanation of that uh, elsewhere that you will find. Um, Jarrah Rudd, likewise, we changed the, the, the basic template is the same, but the way we treat the parameters and estimate U, D and P, that's going to change. Likewise for Lice and Rhymer, it's got to be, it'll default to an odd number. Um, and, um, and, but one of the features of Lice and Rhymer is it tends to converge a little bit quicker. And I'd like to demonstrate that here. And I'm going to set that up in uh, a way in Excel uh, that we can observe directly the performance of each of these models. So next step here is, okay, let's run through and have a look at our models. If I execute the Tian model and note that I'm using the same parameter inputs for the Tian model, we get 10.45.7 for the European and 9.054 for uh, the uh, American option. So American call and European call. Uh, Jarrah Rudd, let's execute that code um, and look at the performance again uh, at 100 steps. We're relatively close to the true value for the American option and the true value for the European option. And then for Lyson Rhymer at 100 steps, if we execute, we come down at 9.064 and 10.45. Okay, so it looks like uh, if we were to compare the three models, it's actually very difficult to split them apart to say which model performs best. And really what you would try to do there is look, consider the performance of the model for different step sizes and go up in sequences and we can do that here in R, but it might be easier to actually demonstrate in Excel. And to do that, I'm going, what I'm going to do is take this R code and set up in R Studio, so let's uh, uh, save it as an R script and then bring into Excel using the BERT add-in um, so that we can run our code in our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so let's see how we would do that. So the next step here is let's transpose or let's transfer this code into our studio. Our studio. We'll open it up and we'll create a new file, file, new R script. Now I might close down what I have here already and then file new file, our script, and then we'll uh, copy our code. So we can copy the cell, in fact, copy cell, and let's put into our studio and go control V. Now we can run this code, run the function and just check. And you can see we're getting the same, we're getting a result down here for 905, that's fine. And then for the Ameri uh, European call, we should get 10, close to 1045. And these are the same results I had obtained before. Go back in again to um, our cell again. Now this time we're using the 10 model. I'll copy the cell. I'll put into the same script as before. Just put here, control V. Let's run uh, the code, the function. And then observe the results we get. And that's mirroring the results I had obtained before. So that's good. 
And then let's go back again and get the jar rod copy, cell, go into our studio, control V, and let's execute this function. And then just check is the model actually working for the call for the Euro American European? And it is. Okay, that's fine. And then last model is Lyson Rhymer. And we'll copy, sell, again, go back into our studio, control V. And just make sure we've executed the function. And then test to see is it working. And we're getting a result and it tallies with what we had before. That's great. Uh, and then finally, we can put in the Black Scholes model, uh, which uh, I'll use again. So I just need really, we'll just copy the whole lot, copy, or copy cell. go into our studio and control V and just make sure our results tally with what we had before and those are correct. So again, for call, I put this time a pot, European pot. Now we're gonna save this file, save as, and I'm gonna save it into, because I've loaded in the BERT, add in into Excel that creates in documents part two. I can go into the functions folder here and save. I'm going to say binomial uh, model, maybe binomial models save. So that now is saved as an R script in that part two folder uh, in my documents, right? Now, uh, let's open up Excel for a moment. And I might create a new file. So file, new. And we'll open up a new file. It's brand new. We might make this a little bit bigger. And again, what we might do, we'll take a look here. Let's go into the add-ins and BERT console. We'll open up and we'll clear out. Let's uh, clear the console. Let's see, clear shell. Okay, and um, welcome and functions. Okay, so that's all good. Now, because I have the <clears throat> functions already available in the BERT2 uh, folder, I can go to equal to R and then look for uh, our different models. So we probably should start off with R dot um, and Cox Ross Rubenstein was the first model that we presented. Okay, so let's come down here to CRR, Tian, Jarod. Let's go C or R, there it is. And then we can go FX and we can say, look, it's a call option. And stock price is 100. The exercise is 100 time period uh, for, uh, we'll say three years for the, well, one year for the European option. Risk free rate is 5%. Five percent again, so dividend zero, zero point two, uh, one hundred steps, and of course I've got to say it's CA. Okay, it's got to be CA, and hit OK, and we get ten forty five. Right. Um, okay. So uh, possibly a way to specify this, uh, maybe somewhat better way of setting up our results would be to consider um, 
set out the value. So we have S, K. We probably should say uh, there's a flag for what type of option it is. Um, if we look at the, um, our values here, so stock price, exercise, time period, risk free rate, okay. So time period, risk free rate, B, I think it's then sigma. And then number of steps. Okay, so if we follow the logic, the flag, the to denote what the option is. So it's an American call, stock price, exercise, time period or maturity, risk free rate, cost of carry, volatility, number of steps. Okay, so we could have written our result as 100. Our parameter inputs is 100, um, CA, 100, 100, maturity one year, uh, risk free rate 5%, cost carry 5%, volatility 20, and we can go with uh, 100 steps. Right. And again, we can do what we did before. We can say R dot C or R and then fill in. So C A stock price 100, risk uh, exercise 100, maturity one year, risk free rate 5%. B is equal to 5%. Sigma is equal to 20. Number of steps is equal to 100. And we should get 1043 uh, again. Okay. Uh, now, that was um, if it's CE and CA, because the difference is zero, there'll be no difference. So if it's CA, or CE, because the dividend here is zero, we're not gonna get any difference in the value of the option. To understand that a little bit, just note that B, the cost of carry, is equal to the difference between the risk free rate and the dividend yield. And if the dividend yield is zero, which is the case here, then uh, it's not optimal to exercise the option early. Okay, so we have here uh, the value of what we can say, look, um, we have CRR. Okay. And <clears throat> likewise, we can do the same for the Tian model. And I'll very simply just say, okay, let's take uh, the, the, what we have here, I'll just copy, control V, equals same again now we can change this to t tian binomial tree option and now with the tian model All right so let's try that again and we've 1045 and jarod and we have license rhymer. Okay, so if it's for the European option, these values, uh, let's just paste again here, equal to, and we'll change this to, I think it's JR. JR, yeah, and then for license rhymer, equal to, I will change to LR for license rhymer. So just the L. Okay, so these are the values for the European uh, call. Okay, and uh, we can compare this for the Black Scholes model. Okay, so Black Scholes model here is equal to R dot 
and I think it was Black Shoals. And then uh, the we better um, take a look at our code. All right, so let's just look at our code for a moment, go back into the 1045. Let, um, so the function looks like this. Okay, so let's go back into Black Shoals and estimate, and we can say equal to uh, or dot black shoals and fx. I hope there's no conflicts with the existing. Now that looks fairly straightforward. So 100, exercise 100, risk free rate is equal to 5%. Uh, Q here is equal to, to understand it's going to be equal to zero and t is equal to one, right? Okay, so let's, did we take a shortcut? Zero, one, s, we're missing a value. Sigma is equal to 20%. Anything else? Type, it's a call. Let's uh, check with what we had before in our studio. S K R Q T Sigma type capital C. Okay, so this time it is capital C. Uh, go back in capital C. Okay, so now we have 1045. So by making it a capital C, right, we've correctly put in that it's for the call option. Now we can see that uh, these values um, are absolutely uh, true. Now to, to estimate then the, or to uh, observe the convergence behavior here, simply what we can do, we consider different step size. So we can say, and uh, basically set out uh, our CRR model, our Tian model, our Jarrod, and then Black Shoals. So B, uh, Lyson Rhymer, and then BS, which we regard as true. Okay, and then we can consider different we can run the estimation. So basically it's equal to the cell and the cell Tian. And we're going to set our so Tian Jarod. We set license rhymer equal to where we estimated uh that 1045 here, 0, 06. And it's noticeable that Tian uh, Lysenreimer seems to be closest here in this instance. And then Black Shoals, which is true, is equal to that value true. Also note that uh, the value of N has no effect on Black Shoals because we don't use step size. Okay, so then we're going to use, uh, consider different step size. So 10, 20, 30, and we can run down and go to 100. So I'm gonna go up to, okay, 120. And then I'm going to re-estimate the value of each of these binomial models for different step size. So each of the step size here each of these values here is supposed to represent a step size. Okay, and likewise, um, just to be clear, right, these are the parameter inputs. Okay, so we're going to run, let's use a data table then in Excel. That's the beauty of Excel. We can run a data table, data, 
what if analysis, data table, and a, in the row, a, we're going to have um, the value of, we're going to consider the value of n, so that, or in the column. Uh, we go back to the original parameter input and we hit OK. And what we've done here is we have basically the value of the options for Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, for Tian, Jarrah Rudd, Lyson, Reimer, and Black Scholes for different step size. Okay, so we can look at or observe the convergence behavior of each of the trees relative to true. Okay, so in this case here, um, we can take our uh, highlight the area and go to insert and use an XY scatter. Right, and uh, looks good. Um, let's go with this one. And we probably need to put in a legend. Uh, we have, um, and maybe there's a better way of doing this. So just delete for a moment. Um, I'm going to copy this table, copy this again, copy and I'll paste values, paste special, and just put in paste special values. And then I will delete. So just delete that row out, delete row or delete cells, shift cells up and use a data table again. So data, what if analysis, data table, uh, sorry, uh, go to insert and we have the legends automatically put in. And what we observe here is in the chart, um, we have a convergence to true which is black, black shows to true using black shows, right? Um, and let's try to understand what's going on here. So if we look at the convergence behavior, the best performing model, if we for a moment can just look at the yellow, that's slice and rhymer, and it very quickly at a very low step size, it gets very close to Black Scholes. Black Scholes is this blue, light blue here. And you can see Lyson Reimer it, for the European model converges very quickly. Uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein, we can see converges like this, Tian, and so on. But if we were to pick out a winner here in terms of model performing best, I would say Lyson Reimer. Now we can do other things here. We could change the step size and so on. Um, and use, in fact, we get oscillation, um, but um, I won't do that for the moment. Okay, so I'll park that here. This is for convergence to true for different step size. So let's just, okay. And that looks, that looks fine. Okay, let's do it for the, American option now, C, A. And then we need to change to true here. If you recall, uh, the value we had, if we go back into broad sample for the American option, let's change the parameters and let's put in a true value of 9.066. Okay, so if I change the parameter values to reflect what's in table two, of Brody and the Temple. Wrong. Spreadsheet, 
So 100, 100, that's correct. Three, it's an American call. The uh, risk free rate was 0 0.03. The B here is um, negative four because the dividend was four was seven percent. Volatility was 20. We go with step size of 100. Now it's not uh, from Brody the Temple, Brody the Temple, um, the value was 9.066. Okay, um, and so we have this value here now, and we should say Brody the Temple at 15,000 steps. Brody the Temple, Brody and the Temple. Okay. And that's the true value. And if we compare what we had done before, let's observe the performance of the model and convergence here for the American option, because it's clear that Lyson Reimer is the clear winner here in terms of performance for the European option. But what about convergence for the American option? Okay, um, let's paste the values, paste special values. I'll delete this cell, cell, set of cells, delete, so it'll just shift up, delete, and it'll shift cells up. Um, and I should have deleted this, so delete, shift cells up. Okay, and we just need to insert. There's a, a, a chart. And now we're getting different behaviors. And it would appear here there's no clear winner. Uh, it's not as evident that convergence to true is significantly better with Lyson Reimer compared to the others. Now, if we change one of the things we could do here is maybe change one of the cells, but for the American option here, so convergence to the American, convergence. To American. Option, call, option. And Lyson Reimer is not emerging as the clear winner. Again, perhaps we need to consider a different step size. Perhaps what we might do here is um, go again here. Now, these values are just pasted in. Let's go from 10, uh, 50, 100, 150. And let's drag down here. And this will take a little bit longer. Now it's, it's actually executed quite quickly. And that's because the light, the R code in the background is, is quite performative. And we can copy again, copy and paste over here, paste special values and try looking at these step sizes evaluate the performance of each of the models, binomial models. Um, we'll do what we did before. We'll delete this set of cells, shift cells up. And then let's highlight and then go to insert, scatter, Okay, and when we look here, the flat line is true. We've licensed Reimer. Uh, we could consider going from 904. We could change the, the reference here. So format axis and do the minimum of 904. Just to blow up 9.04. Okay. 
And looking at that, we don't have a clear winner. It would appear that the Tian model at the very high step size here is probably performing best. Um, and Cox Ross Rubenstein is seems to mirror quite closely Lyson Reimer in this instance with these particular parameter values, the parameter inputs. Now, if you change the parameter inputs and the option was strong or weak, uh, we might get different results also. And again, looking here, it, it's difficult to gauge, but Lyson Reimer doesn't emerge here as the clear winner for this specific instance, right? So we have convergence to the true, convergence to true, American, using broad the temple, the temple as true. Okay, um, last thing we might do here is just to look at how quickly, um, if we were to run the code again, uh, and let's say I copy the estimation, come down below and paste, and change the step size to a thousand, reasonably fast, 5,000. Bit slower. Now it might be recalculating all of the cells when I'm doing this. So that's why perhaps we're getting a little bit of sluggishness. But if we set this up, uh, I suspect in a new spreadsheet without these other values, uh, then it should be quite fast. So I, maybe I'll try to, to do that just as a final. Um, um, examination um, of uh, how good uh, R is in terms of its performance and what it adds um, in terms of spreadsheet modeling. So let's go file new. And I think I can paste. So um, let's take the first spreadsheet and I'll just take the values I have embedded here. Copy and I'll paste and let's increase now. Has to, yeah, okay, let's just test. Is this working? It is okay. Let's change to 200. Okay, it's fast estimation 500, fast 1000, still quite fast 5000. Okay, and as that's well, that's quite a big estimation. Okay, but not too bad, right? So you're getting getting a reasonable level of performance uh, by you by virtue of using uh, our code here. It's not uh, it's not too bad in terms of how efficient uh, the algorithm is in terms of the estimation. Okay, let's leave that there.